Hey, what's up, everybody? Tuesday's here. We are ready to talk NBA DFS. Yeah. Had a wonderful Monday, Monday night. night. So funny. Uh, I had my second favorite kind of DFS night. The nights where you win, like pretty easily, but it's not such a good lineup that you like have to worry about really winning real money. Like you're right in that kind of like top twenty percent, where like you feel you're never really stressed about winning, but at the same time, like your lineup's not good enough to really care about winning real money, so you can just go to bed easy peasy. Well, I fell asleep uh, with my best lineup. I had Jokic. Sabonis and Brandon Ingram as my top three guys in that lineup. And Deontay Murray, who was also really good. And I had a few pieces from the late game. I had Kai Bowman and I fell asleep when he had minus one. Cause I was like, <laughs> I, just, I can't take this. You know, I, I cannot take this. I, I knew my lineup had a, not a chance to, to win maybe, but a chance to place nice with, you know, an under owned Jokic and an under owned Ingram who was awesome. And then Sabonis who ended up being really good. Bowman ended up being fine. So my night ended up being like yours where I just cashed easily in, a, in that lineup. And I, I wasn't going to win anything, but I, it was an easy cash in that line. I just didn't even wake up to stay up for it. Right. That's sometimes those are like, don't be wrong. I'd love to win a GPP every night, but that's hard. I know a lot of you guys who play this game every day. know that's not easy. Like you can go weeks. And especially if like you only play one lineup a day, like I normally do, you go weeks and you can go months without even really being close to the top of a GPP, but those are like, those nights can be stressful in their own right. Cause you feel like you're really winning money. You're watching yourself go up and down the nights where you cash easily, but not so good that you're really ever like in the running for real money. Well, those are like just the nights that are like relaxing. I think that the nights where you're like up near the top and that you don't end up like winning are the most stressful nights. Cause for that's sure. the biggest drop in cash. Like I know it's a big deal. Like whether you like, it sucks when you just make it out of the cash line, right? But the yep. much bigger deal is when you're up top and you and you know you fall down places. It doesn't seem like that, but when you think about it, it's for sure that way. Well, you always joke around like you have had some nice baseball yeah. wins, and like where you get second place in those big tournaments where fifty goes to first place and fifteen goes to second, and everybody's like, "Why are you so mad? Like you won fifteen k." You're like, "Yeah, I did, and that's great." But that's a thirty-five thousand dollar difference from first to second place. That's a stressful, annoying night. Most definitely. Now, it all depends on how it happens. If you moved up from 10th to 2nd at the end of the night, then you're happy. If you were in 1st all night and then dropped to 3rd, you're not so happy. So it literally all depends, and that's what we love about DFS. You never know what that night's going to hold. That's the great part about DFS. All right, so I don't want to get into too much detail about this because we have not a lot of influence over it. Uh, obviously, again, not very little of it comes down to anything that we can talk about. Obviously, like collusion and all this talk of like DFS stuff is like just dirtying the industry up right now. If that's something you're concerned about, because I, I get tagged in 20 posts a day, I feel like about that right now. Like, go check out Overly Fantasy Sports. I mean, now's the time. You want to not worry about stuff like that? Go get in there and check them out. Um, it's a great site, it's a lots of fun. And I cannot tell people sometimes when you try a new site, you just need that one win. Once you win once, you're going to really enjoy what's going on here and the nice added benefit. Let's say you go play this $22 contest every day for three weeks and you don't cash once and you're going to feel a little discouraged. Boom. Overly will refund you every dollar you put into it. Good luck finding anybody else in the industry that's willing to do it for you. The link to sign up is below. Uh, if you haven't tried it yet, go give it a whirl today and you will have yourself some fun. Now let's move into our DK picks for the day. Yeah, let's get it, man. We're loving Overlay. Um... And as far as DK goes, like we've been saying on this for, I feel like, years, but try single entry. Um, if you're playing that that massive GPP, like the $15 or $10 or $8 and throwing one lineup in there, sure, uh, there's a chance you could take it down. But 150,000 other people feel that same way, and the likelihood is, is, is not great. So try some single ent entry and, and you know build your bankroll, all that stuff. I know I've definitely cut it down to most nights. I only play one lineup these days. I just find it to be easier, you know, put one into a single entry, play my cash games and just move on from there. Um, it, it takes away from the roller coaster ride a little bit. I'm talking about because every night is real up and down with DFS. Like last night, like two guys that I was like auto lock for me were guys we brought up on the show yesterday, Sabonis and smart at the end of the first quarter, these dudes were combining for like seven points and you're like, Oh my God, how is this even possible? And Sabonis goes out and balls and Smart goes out and balls after that. It's just take away the emotions and have some fun. Sabonis really balled. Yeah, after that. I didn't even realize he left the game for a few minutes. Anyways, guys, so uh, I've been doing this for a long enough time now to know that 
the DFS world is very cyclical, and we're always going to get real big influx of customers started basketball, started NFL, and then every year right around Christmas for a variety of reasons, you know, a lot of it is people go Christmas shopping, and you know, money is tight for most Americans these days. Football ends, so there's just less people playing. You know, some people have a New Year's resolution to stop playing fantasy. So uh, we always hit a little low this time of the year. What we are going to do to encourage new people to get back in here, guys, we are going to run a sale for the next week. New monthly signups will get half of their first month reimbursed. It's thirty dollars to sign up through the website below. I will get you your reimbursement within twenty four hours. Realistically, twenty four minutes is probably more realistic. I'll do it right away, so you get your first month at half off. New lifetime customers, you will get 25% of your buy-in reimbursed. It's typically $400. We'll get you for $300 for the next week. New annual customers, same thing, 25% off. Instead of $200, it's going to be $50. Lifetime monthly annual, you get all the sports we do, baseball, basketball, or football. Let's go play some sports, guys. Sorry to ramble on so long in the beginning. Let's roll into today's plays. And let's start with Mike Lowry's brother, Kyle, who should get a very big usage. Uh, workload for the Toronto Raptors tonight. So, I mean, anybody you could think of, DeRozan, Kawhi, Gasol, Siakam, Van Vliet, Vince Carter from 20 years ago, these dudes are all gone. It's like literally Kyle Lowry doing everything tonight for the Toronto Raptors as they take on the Portland Trailblazers. So, I cannot reiterate this one enough. I feel like I was definitely slow to accept this, but the Blazers are now a smash spot. To me, they are one of the top five targets to go after every single day in DFS because not only are they porous on defense, they're not bad offensively, so you continually need to put buckets up against them. Uh, Lowry should play, my guess is, as long as the game's competitive. I would assume he's going to play close to 42 minutes tonight. He was already doing that anyway. Uh, no Van Vliet ain't going to make things like any less likely for him to play big minutes. This guy might shoot, I don't know, a thousand times tonight. And I know something that I don't care about as much, but I know like you get on board with. You love when a guy like Lowry, uh, maybe not a top-end point guard, but right on that second level, goes after another really good player like Dame. You know, dueling three-point shooters, their games are relatively similar. Uh, I look at Lowry, it's just a solid place to go for production today. And while the efficiency might not be great, uh, sometimes bulk outweighs that. Yeah, Lowry isn't quite on the level of, level of like, Dame. But he's right there, man. He's an interesting guy because, like, talent-wise, he's probably not right there, but he has a title. Um, he said he just had a different career. You know I'm a big Lowry fan. I love him here. I actually started building a dummy line last night. Forgot that Van Vliet was out. As soon as I realized it, I immediately threw him in. I love the idea of a duel with Dame here. I like going to Dame on the other side of this. We'll get back to that in members only. But the priority is Lowry. Um, I'm with you on all your points. I believe he's shot in 12 three-pointers, like three games in a row. Like, that might be 16 tonight because he's going to have to take control of this game. And the Blazers are bad enough that he can't. Like, there are certain teams, like, I don't know if I'd be really interested in doing this against Philadelphia, for example, just because they're so good defensively. That's not the Blazers. They suck on defense. Agreed. All right, let's move along there. Uh, Steven Adams. So, big men against the Nets. Continues to be a thing. It's been a thing since, I don't know, we were knee-high to a grasshopper. It continues to be a thing. Uh, Steven Adams is playing good basketball right now. So my biggest concern when looking at him is I always want to know what are guys like in back-to-backs? And I went through, I uh, went back and checked them out today. I believe Steven Adams has four back-to-backs this year. He's played really well in two of them, fairly well in the other one. And then he had one bad one and it was not a good matchup. So maybe he was tired. Maybe he wasn't. It wasn't a spot where he was supposed to succeed anyway. He's in a groove right now coming off back-to-back good games. Uh, the Thunder are exceeding expectations of everybody this season and playing very good basketball. Uh, and they also play a lot of competitive games. One of the worst things that can happen to you within the, the NBA DFS world is your team wins by 30 or loses by 30. The Thunder win a lot of good games, which makes you feel good about a guy like Adams who you want out there for the full time. Um, I just think he's a very solid play for about 35-ish points tonight. Um, I don't know if I'd go as far to call him a must because we're about to get into another center right here as well. I just think he's a very solid building block for today. Yeah, he's the cog in the machine type. He's getting a lot of love as of early this morning and not surprising. He fits uh, basically any type of roster construction. You know, I'm a big Adams fan, so I can always get on board. He's probably more of a cash game play, but again, Vooch didn't even play great last night and still walked into 50 just based on his rebounding alone. You're not going to get that from Adams, but you know, I'm with you. He should he should get around 35 here. Wouldn't be surprised if he hit 40. Wouldn't be surprised if it was 30. So somewhere between there. So total side note, speaking of Vucevic last night, is why 
I personally, within it comes to NBA, I love stat sheet stuffers because Vooch had a very, until the very end of the game. But that's the game. Uh, no, he had a bad offensive game. Like he just wasn't feeling it. His shots were in and out. And because guys like Fultz were playing well, he didn't even like take it upon himself to try to you know play aggressively. But because he's such a good rebounder, he was able to be relevant. He looked like he might be a subtle disappointment for the masses last night. Uh, you know, an offensive flurry in the last two minutes really helped him be go from like good to like pretty good. Uh, but that's why I like guys who do a variety of things and why I'm always really timid on scores because if the shot's not falling, they have no other way to help you. And that's why I like guys who can do a variety of things. So if they kind of suck offensively like he did most of the game, uh, again, he had a very plus rebounding game, which is probably going to be his best one of the year. So don't look for that to happen again. But why guys who do a variety of things always just make me feel safer. Yeah, I mean, he, that's the best rebounding game of his career, no doubt. Was it? I, I mean, I never went back to check, but it has got to be right up there at the very minimum. I would. I didn't check either, but I would bet. I wouldn't bet Maisie's life just because I wouldn't want to lose that bet. But you know, top close to for it. Sure. Yeah. And that, oh, top three for sure. Yeah, I mean, again, sometimes big guys just have those weird days where they fall into a bunch of rebounds. I don't think he did anything special. Sometimes crazy though. Yeah, like sometimes the ball just bounces your way, so that was nice to see. Mm-hmm. All right, next up is your boy, Chetty. So here's my question for you, Cavs boy. Uh, clearly, we know that Porter's not going to be around tonight. What's up with Love and Tristan? Is Love talking his way out of town? Was it really rest yesterday? What are your thoughts on that? Love is definitely, you know, on his way out sooner rather than later, in my opinion. He's not handling the situation as maturely as I thought he would. The Cavs are obviously not a, not a good team, but they never, never were supposed to be a good team. As far as it goes tonight... I would be lying to you if I said I knew what was going to happen with these guys. I just don't know. Either way, though, I like Chetty here at 4,500. I like this game. I think it's going to be competitive. You've talked a bunch recently about how Detroit is not good. Detroit is not good. Cleveland is not good either. A lot of times when you have two bad teams like that, you get a game that's close, turnovers. Aside from a rough game last time out, Chetty has been playing really good ball. You know, got to really love the absence of no Kevin Porter for him. They also waived Alfonso, Alfonso McKinney. So all the wing minutes are open for him. If love is out, it only makes me like him even more. But at 4,500, I really like him here. Uh, I expect him to get 25 plus DK points in this spot. Um, and he's another guy, kind of like what you talked about with Vucevic. I mean, obviously he's 4,500, so he's not going to do a ton of other things, but he can do things other than score to, you know, add value. You know who he reminds me of? Dante DiVincenzo from yesterday. Again, I don't know if I think he's a must, but I definitely feel like his price tag is fair. And if it helps your build, you can play him at a variety of places. He's going to get his minutes, so his minutes are safe. And yeah, there's going to be the occasional less than stellar game in there, but he could easily walk into 25 plus DK points tonight. Uh, You can play him again at the three or at the four. So there's a variety of ways to use him. A lot of times he's very uninspiring, but you don't need a guy to be overly inspiring at 4,500. If I told you tonight that he walked into 25 DK points, you'd probably play him in every single lineup. Exactly. That's all it is. Um, Now, again, would I be surprised if he got 22? No. Would I be surprised if he got 32? No. Especially if Love's out. And I am going out on a limb. I don't think that both of these guys play. I actually think it's more likely that both of them are out than both of them play. I expect one of them to be out, uh, which kind of factors into the next guy we'll talk about. Yeah, Tristan seems to be firmly questionable with an illness. And whatever is going through some of these guys in the NBA right now, we're seeing guys miss like a week plus. So there must be some sort of a real viral infection or something going around. Because, you know, usually when you think of being sick, you're like, oh, you're just not going to play today. And like some of these dudes are missing three, four, five games at a time. Yeah, I mean, a bunch of them. You're so right. All right, so speaking of Andre Drummond, so uh, I'm trying to envision this world where Tristan Thompson doesn't play. Uh, John Henson, former Buck, uh, I mean, he's got the uh, physique of Pookie from New Jack City, where I'm just like trying to picture like Andre Drummond, like really trying to like be checked by him, and I'm just laughing in my mind thinking about it. I mean, so I'm a Drummond fan. I like him regardless, but I love him so much that if, if Thompson's out, I had to bring him up on the video. I get it. Like, it's risky because we don't know about Thompson. But if Thompson is out, he's my favorite play on the slate. Gorgie Jang was laughing at the Cavs' front line on, on Saturday night. Um, and he's not that good. He's fine, but he's not that good. And he bowled. I mean, he did whatever he wanted from the inside, from the outside. I mean, Andre Drummond's a much better DFS player than Gorgie Jang. If 
those guys are out, specifically Thompson. I think Drummond gets 70-plus DK points here. Um, if they're in, I think it's like a normal game. But also, I think this game is close. And Tristan Thompson is much bigger and bulkier, et cetera, than John Henson. But he's not as big as Andre Drummond. So he's still in play for me regardless. As you mentioned, if you want a roster like LeBron and or AD, you're not going to be able to afford Drummond. I don't think those guys are must, though, in the world of tournaments. I love Drummond. And if Thompson's out, I can't roster him fast enough. I seriously can't. So let's go back to the idea that uh, Tristan Thompson doesn't play tonight. And again, Thompson is two or three inches shorter than Drummond and probably 30 to 40 pounds lighter. So it's not like he's like a good spot to stop right. him. He's just better than John Henson. So yes. uh, being a Bucks fan, having Henson on our team for a while, he's good with block shots, uh, very much like a, like a Rudy Gobert type, like a very poor man's Rudy Gobert. The problem is, is he gets bullied down on the block. He's tiny. He's real thin. The Bucks were one of the worst rebounding teams in the league for many, many years. Uh, you might even remember a couple of years ago when I called for DeAndre Jordan to have 22 plus rebounds in a game and he did it. And everybody's like, wow, that was a bold call. I'm like, no, it's not. Have you seen the Bucks try to rebound? Like with John Henson in the middle, you just get bullied by bigger centers. I mean, if that's the case tonight, like Drummond will absolutely destroy him down there. And like, what are you like worried? Like Zizich is going to come in like the second coming of Joel Embiid? Please. <laughs> I, 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 yes. I mean, I couldn't agree more. I don't even know which guy they'll play more on Drummond because Zizic is so, you know, he's not, Drummond will run circles around Zizic, which is crazy because Drummond's not like that great of an athlete, but Zizic just cannot hang with him. And then Henson, I mean, like you said, he's real thin, <laughs> already missing Nance. If Tristan's out, I mean, those guys can't really check Drummond anyways. He was already in play. Now they're down to Backup big men who really can't match up with him. This is a, a go-off spot for him, in my opinion. Also, my biggest concern, I brought this up in the game against Golden State. Now, I was fortunate that he fouled out of that game, so he sucked anyways. I said my trepidation on Drummond is the trade talks have heated up. What are the Pistons going to do with him? You know what I mean? Like, does he get, does he get you know, sat right before the game? And, like, on a West Coast game like that, that was scary. This is an East Coast game, so it's not a concern. And they played them like 40 or 41 minutes against L.A. the other night. Clearly, they're not worried about him in that sense. Like, they're not treating him with kids' gloves. Uh, we know Blake Griffin might even be out for the year right now. This is his team for right now. They look more prone to showcase him to try to up his uh, resale value than they are to uh, treat him with kids' gloves so that he doesn't get hurt in order to be traded. Agreed. My biggest concern with Drummond is just that kind of – I mean, you didn't allude to it, but he's just not playing great right now. So that's my biggest concern is he's just not playing great. But he's a guy that, like you talked about with earlier in the show, he's the ultimate, can do so many things. He's a, one of the best stats he suffers in the game, really, as far as DFS goes. And in a spot like this, I could see him with five blocks and four steals. Oh, yeah. I was going to say the blocks and steals could come tonight. you got a bunch of young guards right? on Cleveland trying to get to the hole. Uh, turnover prone. I mean, Cleveland's just not a good basketball team, right? I mean, everybody knows that. Going back to the I mean, Kevin Love point, like, isn't it weird that all of a sudden it's like Kevin Love and Cleveland are realizing this wasn't working when, like, literally every one of you listening to this show right now was when they made that sign, you're like, this is stupid. Like, how come we all knew that, but Cleveland and Kevin Love couldn't figure it out? And now he's like hurting his trade value by acting like a baby. Okay, so back to Drummond. We were talking about Drummond yesterday. I think it was yesterday. You know, how good is Drummond? He's very good at DFS. I'll tell you, I, what he is, one of the better guys in the NBA, is, I mentioned it, a stat sheet stuffer. He isn't like Russell Westbrook, but he's like on that next tier with his blocks, steals, rebounds, and points. He just doesn't get assists, but the other stuff, he really stuffs the stat sheet. This is true. And quite frankly, when it comes to DraftKings lineups, that's all we really give uh, two hoots about. Amen. All right, guys, so just to reiterate, if you haven't started playing on OverlayDFS.com and you're getting turned off by some of the uh, scuttlebutt throughout the industry right now, go give it a whirl. We got those sales up for the next week. Uh, again, like I said, been doing this long enough. I understand the ups and the downs and the cyclical portion of this. So this is just our way to try to help you guys out and help ourselves out at the same time. You scratch our back, we'll scratch yours. Come get those discounts for the next week. Um, let's go back out and have another winning night. Thanks, guys, and have a great day. Thanks, guys.